We're just sailing up toward the northern tip of Sardinia. We're going to try and get through something called the Fornelli Passage, which will take us into the Straits of Bonifacio. This is the water that separates Corsica on the north with Sardinia on the south. It's supposed to be a great place to cruise because there's so many islands, so many little harbors, so many wonderful beaches. It looks like a really fun place to explore. But first, we've got to get through the Fornelli Passage. I wanted to break away to see the world. I longed for excitement, the romance of travel. So we built a boat. And now we travel the oceans. Join us as we voyage to distant shores. The northern tip of Sardinia has a bunch of islands off the corner, a lot of rocks, all the islands have rocks around them. Really tricky navigation. One of the challenges of sailing is navigating, especially when we're near land where it's shallow and we could hit something. It's not like driving on a highway with lots of road signs. Instead, we have to use landmarks and try to match up what we see with what the chart shows us should be there. This is fantastic. It is, just looks beautiful and we can see the range marks so we're having no problems. We anchor off the little town of Stintino and the next morning I have to do a sail repair before we continue further along the coast. When we lowered the sail after coming through the Fornelli Passage, I discovered we'd broken a sail slide, one of many that enable the sail to rise up and down the mast. This task is like sewing on a button, really, but the thread and Dacron sail fabric are a lot heavier, making it hard to push a needle through. So like all sailors, I use this leather sailing palm to help me get the job done without hurting my hands. It's really just a type of thimble, but on a grander scale. Beside us in the anchorage is the German yacht Karen, friends from an earlier voyage that we've met up with here. It's a great day for a sail, and after Cheryl's quick work replacing the sail slide, we're underway. Well, it's nice to be sailing with our friends. It's fun to sail in company sometimes. Of course, they always say whenever two sailboats are together, there's a race. Haha, and we're winning. From Stentino, we'll be heading along the north coast of Sardinia, making stops at Castel Sardo and Capotesta before heading across the strait to the French island of Corsica. From there, we'll continue through the strait and back into Sardinian territory to cruise the islands of the Madalena Archipelago. To make sure we catch every breath of wind, we put out our downwind pull to lock the jib, the forward sail, in place. We fall back a bit, setting it up, but as the sails fill, two-step picks up the pace. Up ahead, we see the distinctive promontory of Castle Sardo, and we're back in the lead. This delightful old village with its castle on the summit was once the principal defense for the Genoese on the north coast of Sardinia. Unfortunately, we won't have much time to explore the town, since we've got a good weather window to get through the strait if we leave first thing in the morning. 
We're the first ones at the dock, with Karen coming in close behind, in our very relaxed and friendly cruisers race, so we don't give them too hard a time about our victory. Welcome to Castel Sardo. <laughs> <laughs> Out of training, That's that. still. Okay. It's beautiful. It's absolutely gorgeous. Gorgeous it is. We get an early start the next morning with light winds from behind, perfect conditions for getting through the Strait of Bonifacio, where the winds will accelerate. But for most of the day, it will be a relaxing sail along Sardinia's beautiful north coast. Yeah, what a pretty spot. What an incredible view from the marina. It's a great thing about Sardinia. There's just so much history along the coast. We're going to be seeing lots of pretty spots like that, I think. The islands and coves in this area provide excellent shelter for all sizes of boats. For this reason, British Admiral Nelson chose Sardinia and the Madalena Islands as the base for his fleet while blockading the French in 1804. During his time here, Nelson never set foot on land, a total of 15 months. As he cruised the coast, Nelson sent numerous letters to his superiors in Britain, recommending the Madalena Islands as a naval base. But it wasn't until 1887 that a naval fortress was built here for the Kingdom of Sardinia, and it is now also a base for NATO. By late afternoon, the grey rocky promontory of Capotesta comes into view, and Paul confirms our position by checking the details on the lighthouse. The solid granite rock of this cape has been sculpted into whimsical shapes by the powerful winds and waves that can funnel through this narrow body of water that we're now approaching. We're just sailing into the Straits of Bonifacio. This is the body of water between Sardinia on the south and the mountains of Corsica on the north. This area where it comes together, it's only six miles wide, and because of that, the wind tends to funnel through this narrow channel. We've been lucky to have had such gentle breezes today. Capotesto was once an important source of granite for the Romans. Wow, this is one spectacular harbor. But when you've seen a couple of islands like this, you just start to take them for granite. Since the wind is blowing through the strait from the west, we and our friends aboard Karen head for the anchorage on the east side of Capotesta, since it will be sheltered from wind and sea today. Okay, I've got 60 feet out now. That looks perfect. Now let's get the mainsail down. We could go into the nearby marina at Santa Teresa, but we all prefer to anchor in these beautiful surroundings. The following day, we head out into the strait, setting our course for Corsica, on the north shore, where we'll check into French territory at the main port of Bonifacio. Although Bonifacio is only about an hour's sail from Capotesta, the coastline is completely different. Soft, chalky cliffs, as opposed to the hard granite we were seeing in Sardinia. Seeing how this coastline erodes, we're surprised to see that the town of Bonifacio is built right out to the edge and suspended over air and water. We don't notice it at first since it blends in so perfectly with the rock it's standing on. But look at the rock falls. Would you live in one of these houses? If you drilled straight down from your basement, you'd be in mid-air. This is the entrance to the incredible harbour of Bonifacio. Some people theorize that Homer was writing about this harbor when he wrote in the Odyssey about Odysseus coming in here and meeting up with the Lestragonians. He sent three men ashore to talk to the Lestragonians, but they tore the first one apart and ate him on the spot. The other two ran back to the harbor and Odysseus was lucky to escape with his ship and his crew. Now that tourism is so popular in this town, I expect we'll get a better welcome. The port of Bonifacio is a remarkable natural harbor. It's a fjord about 100 meters wide that winds inland for about one and a half kilometers. This impressive citadel, which gives Bonifacio such a fairy tale appearance, was built during the Genovese occupation in the 16th century to defend this desirable port in times of siege. Once we've cleared through customs, we show this by lowering our yellow Q flag and raising the national flag of the country we're in in this case, the French flag. Now officially, this is all that's required, but in Corsica, it's a bit more complicated. 
As an island with its own distinct identity, Corsica has its own flag. So out of courtesy, most sailors fly both the Corsican flag and the national ensign. Time for an evening ashore, so we climb up the fortress steps from the port to wander through Bonifacio's upper town. The atmosphere in the old narrow streets is distinctly French, from the choice of fine cuisine to the local neighborhood game of boules. Can you tell from the street signs that Napoleon Bonaparte was born in Corsica? Bonifacio is a beautiful historic port, but it's definitely a tourist town. I know there's a lot more to Corsica, but we don't have time on this trip to go further inland, but I know we'll be back. For now, it's fun getting a taste of the French culture on the north side of the strait. We've got a baguette, some French cheese, fine French wine, pâté de foie. Salut! Salut. Are you interested in the cruising lifestyle? Are you planning to sail away on a cruising adventure? Or researching cruising areas and destinations? Distant Shores is a television series about the cruising life with lots of tips for sailors planning to sail away. This is Oswego, New York. We are entering the Erie Canal system and this will take us all the way from Lake Ontario to the Hudson River, which gets us to New York City. Plus destination information to help you make your cruising plans. Yeah, I can stand on the bottom. We've been filming distant shores for nearly 15 years and know the fun and challenges of the cruising life. We've made distant shores with you in mind. We include plenty of cruising tips in this travel series, as well as lifestyle segments and hints for sailors heading to exotic destinations. Encouragement for you and your crew to get out cruising. Destinations include the Intracoastal Waterway, the Bahamas, Caribbean, the Mediterranean, Scandinavia, Transatlantic Passage Making, the French Canals and more. Leaving Bonifacio, we once again have pleasant wind conditions as we continue east. But the wind isn't our only concern in this part of the strait. There's a lot of rocks and shoals in this channel, and it has been a graveyard for ships. In 1855, the worst shipping disaster in the Mediterranean occurred here, when a ship called the Semillant was leaving the city of Bonifacio into the straits and ran up aground on the Ile de la Vazie, the little rocks almost in front of us here. It's the worst disaster ever. All 773 people on board died, were washed up on the island. After the storm, the bodies started to wash ashore on this island, which was inhabited only by one shepherd. And uh, he basically sort of collected the bodies. And then they were buried here in this cemetery. They were so badly mangled that they didn't, weren't even able to identify them. So most of the stones are unlabeled. Just that one grave of the officer was able to be marked with the right name. The rest of the stones, 773, are all unmarked. This is a cruising ground that we've really been looking forward to on this trip. We're sailing through the Archipelago de la Madalena on the northeast coast of Sardinia. Uh, it's a group of islands that's now a national park. They're all made out of red granite, so as you can see, the scenery is just stunning. Uh, there's all kinds of little rocks and islets, little coves. Most of the people coming out here today are just coming out for the day, so for those of us that stay at anchor at night, it gets pretty quiet, but during the day it's lots of fun. Even people that don't have boats can come out on the tour boats for the day and enjoy the beach. It's a fun place to cruise. Uh -huh. 
There's even a flotilla from the local sailing school. What a fun Hi. way to learn to sail. Can you imagine a more beautiful day camp? Yet it's possible to find a bay to yourself, and with hundreds of small coves and islets to choose from, we don't have to go far. We drop our little dinghy anchor and settle in for a relaxing afternoon. How's the water? Come on in, it's great. I love Sardinia. This is the way to study the local geology. The rocks are all red granite, sculpted by winter winds and storms into these fantastic shapes. And with the golden sands around them, it forms one of those magical and unusual places on the planet that make exploring by boat so worthwhile. Our next stop is La Maddalena, the main island and town in the archipelago. This is the only place with a significant population, just over 11,000 people, and it's a busy little town. They are keen boaters in this town. La Maddalena is a good base for shopping and banking. It's also a base for the Italian Navy and serves a nearby NATO base as well. Well, after the peacefulness of being an anchor, it was a little bit hairy going through this town with all the traffic and noise. But it's nice to be able to stock up, have lots of provisions, so we can continue to enjoy the cruise through these beautiful islands. But when we get to our next anchorage, the weather turns foul and things aren't so beautiful. Man, it is blowing like stink. We were going to move on today, but there is just way too much wind out there for us. There's even too much wind here in the anchorage. We're worried about the anchor dragging, so what I'm doing is letting out a bit more chain here. You have to be really careful, because if it's not enough chain on the bottom, the anchor could be being pulled up, and we could find that the anchor could lift right out. We'd be blown right back on the rocks. Got to let it out really slow. I'll put out so there's about 35 meters, 40 meters. Whoa, look at that, man, oh man. When the wind is blowing this hard, the boat jerks at the chain, pulling it up tight. So we put on a snubber, a length of stretchy nylon line as a shock absorber. This will help prevent the anchor from pulling out of the bottom, or in extreme conditions, prevent the chain from breaking. Well, that's done. We've got about 40 meters of chain out altogether. And as our British friends say, it is blowing a hooli. And it continues to blow. So we're up all night doing an anchor watch, making sure our floating home doesn't drag and smash up on the rocks, now veiled in darkness around us. We each do a three-hour watch, and it's Paul's turn on deck. Well, it doesn't look like the wind has dropped at all. In fact, it looks like it's gone up about 10 knots. From today, the forecast said it was supposed to go down this evening. It's really crappy. So, we are doing an anchor watch tonight, it looks like. What we're trying to do is make sure that the boat hasn't moved, that, it's an that the anchor hasn't dragged in the sand. I've done some bearings using the uh, compass and the binoculars here. Done some bearings off of houses and street lights I can see ashore. Plotted them on here on my little plotting chart and I'm trying to make sure that we're not moving at all. It's going to be a long night. Wow, that was a crummy night. The wind was up and down, but I was watching and the anchor did not drag at all, so we're fine here. But it is just, it's just not nice. We're going to go on and try and find a harbor that's a bit more protected. After looking over our charts and cruise guides, we decide the best strategy is to head north in the shelter of La Madalena Islands to the marina at Santa Teresa. While these strong winds are blowing, we can rent a car there and explore inland a little. Santa Teresa is the major port on the north coast of Sardinia, where the ferry to Corsica comes in. 
and it's a safe place to leave the boat while we go exploring. I want to get us out into this north coast of Sardinia to take a look at the Strait of Bonifacio from the land. We don't normally rent a car, and I want to treat my lady right. On this island, I found a really good deal for renting a Mercedes. These little two-seater smart cars are all the rage in Europe. They're great on the highway and even handle a bit of off-roading. We're heading into the countryside to visit an agro-tourism farm where some local women are preparing a traditional dish for the upcoming festival of San Giovanni. It's called cajou furriato. Literally, it is cheese retard. I mean cheese gone and came back. Because now the lady uh, will put these pieces of cheese on the fire in order to melt it, to take off the oil, and then she will cook again the cheese in order to become cheese again. And it is not so easy because if you lose just the right second, the right moment, it's impossible to have cheese again. Usually it's served with the honey or sugar dressing. And what about the honey on the cheese? Mm. It's your first time, I think. <laughs> Very nice. The honey, it's... It gives you so much energy. It's a little bit like melted mozzarella cheese, but it's sweeter. There's definitely a sweetness to it. Fifteen kilos of cheese have been melted down to make this traditional sweet. We load the vehicles and follow Panuccia back to town for the festival. St. John the Baptist Day, or in Italian, San Giovanni Battista, is a spectacular way to conclude our voyage through the street. Tell us what's happening here tonight, it's wonderful. Um, you are in Sardinia, you know, Sardinia is a very important tourist resort. But in spite of this, in Sardinia we protect our traditions. And uh, we have a lot of feasts on the seaside, on the pine woods and on the squares. In this square that is called Santa Lucia Square, because uh, this one is the church of Santa Lucia that is the oldest of Santa Teresa, um, today we have the feast of San Giovanni and the San Giovanni fires, because in the middle of the square uh, you will see um, bonfires and you will see people jumping on them. Jumping over the fires? Jumping over over the fire, yes. Because it is a feast dedicated to San Giovanni Battista, that is the saint patron of uh, rural and pastoral world. And uh, as uh, the sunlight is the most important source of life for rural world, patients use in the day of Giovanni Battista to light uh, bonfires and in order to replace the, the sun, the sunlight. So that's uh, what you will see today. Uh, people jumping the, the fire, and then other people offering something to drink and something to eat. It's a much bigger fire than I imagined. I can't believe that people will jump over this fire. Even when someone doesn't make it, they don't seem that perturbed. Just casually shake the hot coals out of their shoes. Well, I hate to disappoint you, but my survival instinct is just too strong to participate in this one. And I think Panuccia is feeling the same way. But I have a feeling that Paul's going to go for it. Not everyone's doing this. Just a few of the people are trying it, but when the flames aren't too high, it doesn't look too bad. While Paul thinks a little more on his fire jumping decision, I talked to Panuccia about the importance of tradition. Always in Sardinian festivities, you celebrate old and new tradition, always, because tourism now is our first source of life, but tradition were and are and will be, we hope, our source of life. So is he going to do it?
Are you interested in the cruising lifestyle? Are you planning to sail away on a cruising adventure? Or researching cruising areas and destinations? Distant Shores is a television series about the cruising life with lots of tips for sailors planning to sail away. This is Oswego, New York. We are entering the Erie Canal system and this will take us all the way from Lake Ontario to the Hudson River, which gets us to New York City. Plus destination information to help you make your cruising plans. Yeah, I can stand on the bottom. We've been filming Distant Shores for nearly 15 years and know the fun and challenges of the cruising life. We've made distant chores with you in mind. We include plenty of cruising tips in this travel series, as well as lifestyle segments and hints for sailors heading to exotic destinations. Encouragement for you and your crew to get out cruising. Destinations include the Intracoastal Waterway, the Bahamas, Caribbean, the Mediterranean, Scandinavia, transatlantic passage making, the French canals and more.